In this tutorial, I will show you how to create matrix rain effect in Cavalry. I will make sure to include project file in the description below so you can download it and see how everything is set up. So to create this effect, I'm using quite a few nodes. I'm using a bunch of utilities like measure text or math or range follows and so on. I'll do my best explaining what each one of these layers do as we create them. So there are a few ways to create this matrix effect. What I end up using is simply creating a single column and creating illusion of a text that is actually falling down. What is happening is I'm simply showing the next letter in the array and so on and so on while hiding the ones at the very end. That's the basis of this effect. So let's jump into our fresh composition. I'm using Cavalry 2.3 to create uh, this whole effect just in case things are not working correctly for you. And for this effect, I'm going to use Source Han Sans Japanese font. Let me change it to like 50. I'm going to create a string array so we can easily change the text using an array. So what the string array is, is simply a list of strings, as in text, and this list is being referenced further down the line with duplicators. So if I select the text shape layer, hold option, click on duplicator, and then as you can see, the text is referenced one at a time in the grid fashion. If I add another string, or another letter in this case, the whole thing is referenced again and again. Okay, so what I did was simply ask ChatGDP to generate a number of Japanese characters and I put them into this string. I added a number of zeros and ones in this uh, string array, so then the whole thing gets further mixed up. So what we need to do is simply create our first column I'm going to use linear duplication, go vertical, and make sure the whole thing is set to fit. And we need to space this out so the letters barely touch top and bottom. So now if I increase the number of copies in duplicator, then as you can see, the um, characters from the string are being duplicated throughout this duplicator. To make this uh, setup really responsive, we need to take the the height of our composition into account. So what we can do is press Command K, grab the height of the composition and plug it into the size. As you can see, the duplicator is creating a number of copies slightly outside of our composition. So what we need to do is take the um, text shape height into the account. So the way to do this is simply disconnect our resolution from the size property, add a math node, then simply take the height of the composition, plug it into the first value, change multiply to subtract. And now, if I increase this value, then as you can see, we will push the whole letters together and duplicator will simply duplicate them within our composition. To calculate this number automatically, we need to find out the height of the text shape layer. We have a tool for that, it's called measure text. So now if I grab the text string, drop it on top of the string in measure text, do the same thing with font, and do the same thing with font size. So this way, this measure text tool will give us the uh, width and height of the string using this font and then the font size. We can use this information to simply offset our letters within the first applicator. So we can take the text height and drop it into the second parameter. So now, if I duplicate our initial shape 
because of times, as you can see, everything stays within the composition. It is slightly misaligned, so what we need to do is simply add um, a line modifier. This align modifier will force the X and Y of a pivot point to be centered in a duplicator, and this will keep our duplicator perfectly centered within the composition. So let's change this down to something manageable, like around maybe 15. Now we need something called color array to be able to control the color of multiple items from one place. I created two extra values here, and we can rename this one as main letter, this one as trail, and the last one as background. So next thing to do is create background shape. This shape will automatically resize to the size of this composition. Then simply drag and drop this on top of the background shape to change the fill color. Next step is to fake the motion of falling letters from top to bottom. We are going to do this by faking the opacity and the colors of the letters themselves. Now we can change the color of all the letters from the text shape like this to access all of them, which when they are duplicated, we have to use a submesh. So find submesh. This node will allow us to access and modify properties within the shapes that are being generated by duplicator. So for example, we can change the color to yellow, even the when the original color is pink. So now right click on the color property in the sub mesh and find color blend behavior. And what this color blend node do is it allows you to remap your shapes according to this gradient and by using follow you can control how this remap is happening so now if i bring up the color array simply select a keyframe on the gradient drag and drop the letter here the same thing with the trail Create one more keyframe and do the same thing with the background. So now everything disappeared because the background color and the letters color are the same type of a keyframe here. So to be able to control how this color blend is affecting our meshes, we have to add a falloff to the color blend. And we are going to use range falloff. Range falloff lets you specify which shapes are being affected, in this case by the color blend, using a percentage, like, like start and end. But we can only see a singular color, the very first one. To be able to see all of them, we are have to check the option Use Graph. And if you open this, you can see how everything is being further remapped inside the range color. So if I just have a simple linear remap, so you can see the whole thing is being remapped from the same color as the background all the way through this pale green and all the way to this very saturated green at the end. So what I'm going to do is move this all the way to the bottom, change the position of the second second keyframe to 0 0.1 and then the last one i'm just going to bring it in maybe around halfway so this way we have most of the letters uh, green and hidden with a nice blend of colors in between so now to animate this we can use the offset and as you can see the basis of the matrix effect is actually happening here so if i add um, frame behavior and press space to play. As you can see, everything's animated, but the whole thing is animated from bottom to the top of the layer. To reverse it, we simply need to put minus value in our frame behavior. 
and press play and everything is animated from top to bottom as we want. Now this frame uh, modifier is simply outputting a value of the current frame. So as your playback advances, this value increases, which is this one. And this is why the offset is keeps changing, which creates the animation itself, as you can see. And by modifying this initial start value to something like maybe let's say minus five, we can speed this up. If you change it to something like 0 0.5, it can make it slower. And by changing this value to a positive number, you just can you can speed it up in the opposite direction. So I'm going to leave it at around minus two. Now I'm going to select this duplicator, hold option, and click on our duplicator again. Then I'm going to change grid to linear. Leave it as a horizontal. Make sure it fits the composition width again. And this way we have our matrix effect kind of going. So now we need to calculate the width of our composition again. We can do this with math node, but in this case I'm going to use JavaScript math. JavaScript math works in a similar way as the math node does, except you can create your own calculations here and you can add a huge number of indexes which you can recall in your calculations. Let's make it clear with an example. If I rename this to comp width, so if I press command K to see properties of the composition, grab the width of composition, plug it in here, close this window, find our measure text property, grab the JavaScript math, and then simply take the width of our letter, drop it here, and now I'm ready to write my expression in the very top box. So the way you recall this number is with an n value, and then you use an index number next to each row to recall it. As you can see, I can recall number one, number two, and this way we can animate it. So now to write our final expression, we want to specify our composition minus the width of the letter itself. As you can see, then the whole thing is nearly correct, but we can add a little bit of padding. So if I change the padding to zero and then simply change it, I can further push it in and the whole thing stays perfectly center. The whole thing fits perfectly within the composition. So now to make this easier to modify, I'm going to create value array and rename it as control and change this name to font size. I want to be able to easily modify number of columns, then number of rows, and extra padding, which we had in here, extra. So if I plug in the font size into the font size, change it again back to 50, number of columns is here, because we're duplicating the single column across the entire composition. So nine as it was. And the column value is 15. So this is our row. There we go, as perfect as it was. And the last value is the extra padding. Drop it here and it was something around 19. We are nearly done. So by having this single array, we can easily customize our design from single point. So for example, have font size of 20, and we can uh, increase number of column to maybe more than 20, like so, and just increase number of rows. And maybe take down the padding tiny bit to like 10 pixels, so this barely, barely fits in. And if I simply scroll through, you can see effect is happening. We have letters which are perfectly green, and they are fading into nothing at the very top. So now is the case of further 
customizing it using the color blend. So if I change the position of it, this keyframe to something like 0 0.5 to fade this in, and then click on range fall off, click on the graph, and further customize it, then you can further affect how the color blend is looking. You have to experiment with those values because if you increase the start and end, you will push the beginning of this setup further out and the end will push the bottom of it like down. So you have to play with those values a little bit to maybe say to something like 98 and this one to like maybe 3 to single out a single value as you can see like to color only the very first letter now one thing you have to keep in mind is that the start and end values and the graph itself are dependent on the text size on this value and then how many copies you have in a single column because if you send the start value to low, as you can see, everything will be visible. So you have to just bring it back a little bit. Same thing, if you play too much with the graph, then more of the first letters at the very bottom will be like solid green. So the whole thing depends on how you want to style this effect. Last thing, I'm going to rename this as matrix ring. And the last thing we need to do is add a delay to the shape time offset. If you add a stagger, then as you can see, you will have this kind of a zigzag pattern falling down, which I don't want to. One of the behavior that worked really well for me was simply adding a random a modifier. And if I just grab the minimum and plug it into max, right click on max, add expression, and simply add value times minus one, then I will simply inverse the max to the opposite value of the minimum. And as you can see, this is how it's visualized by the um, cavalry right now. So you can push those values up and down nicely and create the matrix rain effect like so. And again, all of this is procedural, so you can slow it down. In that case, you will have to play with the mean and max values to further like mess it up, play with the duration of your composition and you're pretty much done and to clean this up i'm going to put the extra three layers into a group color utilities and drop it at the bottom and this is our control so as you can see this is a really flexible way of creating this effect you can easily customize the font you can easily customize the number of copies Everything is randomized and responsive to your composition size. And the way we set it up is that we can easily control it from a single place, like so. Hope you learned something new and thanks for watching.